Cisco Electric here. Today is Sunday, June 1st, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. BMW has revealed a revised i4 Grand Coupe with updated styling and improved efficiency along with a new M60 xDrive high-performance variant that's set to hit the market this summer. The 2025 i4 delivers improved range thanks in part to a new silicon carbide inverter which BMW says reduces energy consumption by 4.5%, adding up to 13 miles of range compared to the previous generation. The updated base model single motor eDrive 35 trim will now provide up to 266 miles of WLTP range, while the single motor rear wheel drive eDrive 40 will now have an estimated range of up to 317 miles on Europe's WLTP testing cycle. Performance output is unchanged for both of these trim levels. Today's M50 performance trim will be replaced by the new M60 xDrive, which tops the lineup with 57 more horsepower for a total of 601 horsepower. It can pull off a 0 to 62 mile per hour time of 3.7 seconds and 267 miles of WLTP range. No additional details were provided for these models, but production is expected to begin in July. It's unclear what other changes might be made for the U.S. market, but if they stack up to the BMW iX updates we reported on back in March, I'll be pleased to share the good news. The i4 has been BMW's best-selling EV in the U.S. most recently, with 7,125 sold in the first quarter of this year, up over 50% from 2024. For context, the i4's primary competitor is Tesla's Model 3, and 52,520 of those were sold in the same period in the U.S. While we're talking about BMW, the company also revealed last week that they have begun real-world testing of solid-state battery technology in a prototype BMW i7 with their Colorado-based battery manufacturing partner, Solid Power. This partnership started back in 2016, and in 2021, BMW led one of Solid Power's funding rounds alongside Ford. Korean battery manufacturer SK On also followed with an investment in 2021. During the i7 solid state testing in Munich, Germany, BMW is focused on refining methods of managing cell expansion, operating pressure, and thermal conditions within the battery pack. Solid state batteries promise higher energy density for longer driving range, faster charging times, and improved safety due to their non-flammable solid electrolytes. Research has shown they can offer a longer lifespan and better performance in extreme temperatures, but they can also present challenges including high production costs, complex manufacturing processes, and more. Addressing these concerns is key to reaching full-scale production. We've previously reported that Mercedes and Stellantis have begun real-world testing of Factorial's semi-solid state batteries, and there have been plenty of rumors related to other automakers, but this BMW i7 testing is our first official confirmation of fully solid state automotive battery packs operating in the wild. Could BMW be the first to market with the first true solid state battery pack? On to more battery news, we recently reported about General Motors' battery strategy regarding lithium manganese rich or LMR chemistry and their plan to incorporate more lithium iron phosphate or LFP batteries. We also reported about that plan last fall after their investor day. This week, GM provided some more insight on how they will source their lithium iron phosphate batteries, which they project will reduce battery costs by up to $6,000 per vehicle. The company announced that they will be retrofitting joint venture factories in the United States to produce LFP batteries with South Korean partners, LG Energy Solutions, and Samsung SDI. The retrofitting will take place at Ultium Cells Plants in Warren, Ohio and Spring Hill, Tennessee, co-owned with LG Energy Solutions, which is currently operational, and a Samsung SDI joint venture facility in Indiana set to begin operations in 2027. 
Originally focused primarily on nickel, cobalt, manganese, or NCM batteries, these plants will now incorporate LFP production lines with the intent to manufacture more affordable battery cells. It's expected that luxury models under the GM umbrella will continue to utilize the high nickel batteries. Production of LFP batteries is expected to begin in 2027 at the Indiana plant, with Ultium cells starting earlier as retrofitting progresses. LMR production lines are expected to be integrated at existing U.S. sites by 2028 if the development proves successful. At the same time, GM has announced they will be investing $888 million into their New York plant for a next-generation V8 engine, with an expectation of completion by 2027. Looks like GM is going to be continuing to produce internal combustion engines for many years to come and is probably not planning on honoring their public commitment to go fully electric by 2035. In January, CEO Mary Barra said, let me be clear, GM remains committed to eliminating tailpipe emissions from our light duty vehicles by 2035. But in the interim, deploying plug-in technology in strategic segments will deliver some of the environmental benefits of EVs as the nation continues to build its charging infrastructure. In March, GM was also approved to join the Formula One grid under their Cadillac brand for the 2026 season, which also marks the beginning of a new era of hybrid powertrain regulations. Cadillac was supposed to be an all-electric brand by 2030, but in recent months, the company walked back those plans. Back in December, we shared news that the world's leading EV battery manufacturer, CATL, had developed and presented a new swappable battery system called Chaco SEB that would be implemented in hundreds of brands' vehicles with tens of thousands of supporting swapping stations to be built across China. I'll link that video below if you want to learn more about the finer details. This week, just six months later, CATL has launched its first Chaco SEB battery platform with the delivery of 1,000 Chang'an Ocean 520 electric sedans to a taxi operator in China. This marks a notable milestone in standardizing battery swapping in the country. The Chaco SEB system allows drivers to swap batteries in just 100 seconds, offering 320 miles of CLTC range with a 56 kilowatt hour LFP battery. CATL says they have already established 34 swapping stations in the city of Chongqing, with plans to expand to 50 by year end and 1,000 across 31 cities by the end of 2025. CATL's partnerships with automakers like GAC, FAW, and NEO aim to integrate Chaco SEB into more models in the near future. But CATL had even more battery news this past week. The company also announced a significant breakthrough in lithium metal battery, or LMB, technology, where researchers at CATL's 21C lab have doubled the lifespan of LMBs to 483 cycles, while maintaining a density of 500 watt-hours per kilogram. For reference, a typical lithium-ion battery density is around 200 to 300 watt-hours per kilogram. Lithium metal batteries use pure lithium metal as the anode, which has a higher energy density than the graphite anodes in lithium ion batteries. That results in greater energy storage and longer lifespan. The key to this advancement lies in a new lithium salt electrolyte, developed through the advanced analytical techniques to track lithium and electrolyte evolution through the battery's life cycle. CATL optimized the electrolyte formulation by introducing a lower molecular weight diluent. This adjustment increased the electrolyte salt's mass fraction, improved ionic conductivity, and reduced viscosity, all without increasing the total mass of electrolyte used. The company says this innovation addresses long-standing durability challenges and brings LMBs closer to commercial production. The application of lithium metal batteries are thought to be beneficial not only for long-range passenger EVs, but in aviation as well. While there still seems to be delays and setbacks for EV advancements, news like emerging chemistries and improved cell performance continue to materialize.
Ford has taken the cover off their latest contender for this year's Pikes Peak International Hill Climb in June, introducing Ford's Super Mustang Mach-E All-Electric Demonstrator. The souped-up race car with its massive rear wing creates an astounding 6,125 pounds of downforce. I cannot wait to see this one take on America's mountain. This is the third consecutive year that Ford is competing with an EV at Pikes Peak following the Supervan 4.2 and F-150 Lightning Supertruck. We were fortunate enough to have the opportunity to join Ford in Stard's first EV attempt at Pikes Peak with the Supervan. In our dedicated coverage, we told the complete history of EVs at America's Mountain, Ford's demonstrators, and some background about driver Roman Dumas. Ford also produced an outstanding in-house documentary on the subject, and I was thrilled to contribute to that as well. I've added links to those videos in the description below if you'd like to get up to speed. We will keep you posted on all the details for the race to the clouds where EVs continue to claim records. Well, those are our top EV stories for this week. If you found value in our coverage, we ask that you share this video online and be sure to subscribe so we can continue producing this show. Thank you all for joining me this week and until next time, drive, fly, ride, go electric.